work gang, I'm impressed. Hey, welcome to the video. This is the uh, seasonal uh, wrap up video for uh, Kiwi Kaimawana season two. So, we've got a few things in this video I'm gonna show you. Gonna show you some uh, wetsuit hangers. Gonna show you a uh, new wetsuit. Gonna show you uh, a couple of dives. Well, it's actually one dive split into two parts uh, at uh, Wainui, it's a shore dive, uh, me and Yang. And, uh, and my outboard motor as well. So just giving you a little bit of behind the scenes type stuff. And just gonna talk a little bit about uh, diving in general and uh, being a YouTuber and stuff. Now, prior to doing uh, this uh, Kiwi Kaimawana dive stuff, I did a uh, travel video uh, channel uh, called Why in the World for four years. And uh, I learned quite a bit about doing YouTube videos uh, from doing that channel. Uh, one thing I know about it, and one thing I've learned, is that people burn out doing YouTube because you know the YouTube algorithm incentivizes you to continue producing more and more and more and more. So even if you do make it into like the big time, you've got to have some kind of plan going forward because you know it's it's just not a great idea to plan to do this forever because there's a bunch of different things that can and will happen. You know maybe the advertising revenue drops off from YouTube. Maybe your audience gets tired of you, stops watching. Maybe you get tired of doing the videos. Maybe your lifestyle changes and you just don't want to do it anymore or not able to do it anymore. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So if you've been watching this channel, which doesn't have heaps of videos, but if you've been watching it, you know, this, this is not going to be one of those ones where I become like the social media influencer and, and you know, try to try to make it full time, that's probably never going to happen. This is a hobby for me and I don't want to ruin it by you know, adding a whole lot of excess pressure onto myself. That said, you know, it is, it is quite enjoyable in the summertime getting out there and giving this a go. Um, but you know, I was pretty happy with uh, the six months of diving uh, overall and I hope to do this for a few more years, uh, if not longer than a few more years. <laughs> and uh, you know everything about what you've seen up until this point has all been about baby steps you know and I, this is the way I live my life as well I, I try not to take on too much and I just accomplish a little bit more and a little bit more it's, it's always you've always got to keep in mind that you know your journey as a diver as a fisherman you're doing whatever in your life is not the same as the other person's journey you know um, I started doing this at like age 42, you know, whereas you've got other people that have got already 20 years experience on me, you know. So it's important not to compare yourself because that person's journey is not the same as your journey. Um, you, you're not going to take a, it's never a straight line, you know, what you do in life is never a straight line. Anyway, that's enough of that. I won't keep, I won't hold you up, let's jump right into uh, my first time using a spear gun at Wainui and then I'm going to see you and then you're going to see some of the other bits in the video now if you have a look in the comments below you'll see all of the time codes so the comments you got the pinned comment and you got the description you've got all the time codes of what's coming up in the video so if you don't want to watch the whole video or you're watching it uh, later on and rewind the time codes are there so enjoy the video about two three meters of visibility in there the boys are going to jump off the wharf Kaboom. over the next seven minutes I'm going to show you some dive footage now it's not going to be exciting dive footage especially if that's what you've come to expect or you know if you uh, are expecting to see lots of fish or lots of uh, blue mochi or lots of power or something no no this is different you see there I just fell into the water from the wharf this is Wainui Wharf in Akaroa Harbour on the west side and this 
what you just saw loading the spear gun there this is the very first time ever in my entire life that I have swam in the ocean with a spear gun so everything that you're going to see over the next six minutes is going to be that experience and I've edited it down a little bit so you're not going to see um, <laughs> every single little bit of it uh, but I think that this is important because uh, what I'm doing here is for the first time in my life actually having this experience getting used to this getting used to the sensation being in the water with just a catch bag around your waist and a power knife in your hand and like nothing else it's a little bit different than having a spear gun so have a wee dive down here and just have a look and this particular area it's it's extremely thick with seaweed it's a wee bit difficult to find anything but there is power here I have dived here on several occasions before and part of the experience in uh, carrying a spear gun in the water with a float line attached and a float attached is that you're gonna drop that spear gun just like that right there from time to time and use it as an anchor so that you can have a look around and do other things and right here I'm gonna pull the float over and detach the MPI knife now I'm leaving this part of the video largely unedited because I really want you to get a feel for this for how long things take because when people make these glamorous YouTube videos whether it's a dive video whether it's just something else you know they're, they're showing you the highlight reel but I'm showing you here about a minute of footage which isn't cut it isn't edited because you know I want you to get a feel for just how long things actually take now this is also a cautionary tale um, if you're new to diving and uh, or you've never dived around Canterbury before you should really pay attention to what you're seeing in this video what you're seeing is murky water with about two to three meters of visibility that's about average around here we just don't get very good water quality here it's not like in the Coromandel or the far north where it's all blue and clear and stuff no down here it's murky and the other thing is this location this is a shore dive location in Wainui and it's basically pointless doing what I'm doing right here it's completely pointless pulling up the power because you will go through a hundred power before you finally find one that reaches the minimum size of 125 millimeters so look yeah it's it's a nice scenic dive it's nice to go down and just have a look at them uh, to be honest I it was just a waste of time even doing this just pulling them off it's just just leave them alone just look at them this shell is a good example of you know this is how big they are uh, they're that size because they just the whole area gets hammered it never ever gets a break it's just every summer someone's going in there having a look trying to find a power because it's an area that you can drive to and you're never ever ever gonna find one that's big enough not really Ying actually took some sea snails from this area and uh, said that they were not very tasty so that's me shooting the spear gun for the first time now I want you to pay attention to what you're seeing here this is shooting and then reloading for the first time and you're gonna see I guess what you call a bit of a rookie mistake here see I've hooked it on there and then realized oh it's not hooked on correctly so I'm, I'm trying to correct it and then I've got to unhook it and then it's still not right got to completely take that monofilament line back over the front of the spear to correct it this is why it's important I think when you get a spear gun for the first time to go into the ocean in a nice calm shallow area and have this experience because what you're seeing here is a first time experience even then it's still look at this it's still not quite correct but whatever it's it's almost it's almost okay it's almost right <laughs> a little bit more correction and and it's okay because you know reloading a spear gun for the very very first time it's awkward and 
you need this this um, I guess you could call it emptiness you need this black canvas you need this boring dive to have a, a practice shooting there we go shoot again and then on the next re reload it's going a wee bit better because I figured out what I did wrong the first time and my foot's tangled in the float rope another part of this experience that you're gonna have to get used to and watch out for and try not to get hooked up in your own float line see I've bent the monofilament line back correctly it's going back in clicks into place now here we go hook on the monofilament line correctly almost correctly and then reload the bungee so there is more to this dive footage I'm not going to bore you with it all right now but if you tune in later in the video I find something quite interesting under that wharf and uh, if you watch later in the video you'll see it okay so around the side of my house here <laughs> I made these hangers now I made these hangers during last year's um, COVID lockdown and when you've got your old COVID lockdown you can't go out and buy anything so I figured well what pieces of I pieces of stuff have I got available around the house and um, the idea here is to hang up your wetsuits because um, this is just sort of around the side of the house here there's just limited space here and um, so what I did was I fabricated these wooden brackets here just out of some scrap wood that I had and these wooden brackets as well and these bits here are just 13 millimeter irrigation pipe which I just had lying around and the idea is these just pull up and slot into place and then after a dive I come along I hang up my wetsuits on them and um, yeah, I, I did have to go and buy these. These were like 10 bucks each. Um, I'm gonna have to do something about them because they're rusting. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cover them with electrical tape or something. But um, yeah, these are just like um, aluminium rods. You just go and buy them from, you know, Bunnings, might of 10, or, you know, whatever. And um, yeah, so after a dive, rinse my wetsuits and I hang them up here. You know, leave them here for a day or two. Um, because of where I am, you know, you've got the house here and you've got the fence here. This, this is quite a shaded area, so it's, it's quite good. Keeps them out of the sun. Um, I made the folding brackets so that they fold down. And I don't think these things will last forever. They'll only last a few years and then I'll, I'll probably replace them with something else. So yeah, they fold down, so it just um, makes it a little bit easier to walk through here. Um, and this is what I do with my wetsuits. I hang them up here um, after a dive, leave them here for a couple of days, dry out my wetsuit hangers well Ying is here so let's uh, just address some of the YouTube comments that we got from our dive video this is the one in uh, Akaroa okay we got uh, Yan Wen Zhang great work Ying I'm impressed okay do you know this person <laughs> of course oh. that's my co-worker oh well hi Yang Wen <laughs> Ye Wen actually it's Ye Wen yeah yeah okay and we've got Coco Zo. Is that another person you know? Yes, that's my friend who is based in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, um, <clears throat> was it warm enough for you on that day when we did that dive? Um, it was warm, but um, I think it started to getting cold at the end. All right, this is from the same video. We've got Alex Wang. Mate, dive deeper and get some crayfish. Um, sometimes the crayfish are not there, uh, especially in Akaroa Harbor. Uh, and this one that I find, I don't know if you know this person, uh, Coco Charlie Matenga. Good to see the boss lady out there having a crack, mate. Hmm? You don't know Coco Charlie Matenga, do you? I actually have no idea. Uh, I'm not sure what he means when he says the boss lady. Um, Who's the boss lady? He might he might be thinking that we're married. I'm not sure, but if that oh. is the if that is the case, we're not married. It's all right. Just to clarify, if if that was your comment, you be on South Sea Spiros in no time. Yeah, South Sea Spiros. Spiros. It's very nice of you to say that, but um, you know, those guys on South Sea Spiros have got years and years and years of experience. And like we're pretty much beginners compared to them, but that's nice of you to say. So a Kiwi like says, 
choice really enjoy that I cannot wait to head out for a snorkel. Yeah, that's my mate Dave from Auckland. So, Dave, if you do go out on a snorkel, I, I want to see it on your channel, you know, snorkeling video. Um, maybe the snorkeling's not that good in Auckland, I don't know, maybe you have to look around for a good spot. But at least I think that's much warmer there, up there. It will definitely be warmer up there. Yeah. Alright, so this is from the video on um, where we went out on Kaikoura in the evening at 7 o'clock at night and uh, so I, I found the power but you didn't. So that's the first first day? The first day. Yeah. Thanks for the, this uh, from uh, Ho Hardy Winata. Thanks for the motivation. Unlike you, I ended up giving up as I had just washed so much of my energy that I found that it was not worth it. Good job for persevering. Uh, I caught one though from the previous day. So when we went out there, um, we were in the water for under half an hour, 45 minutes, and you gave up, didn't you? You'd had enough. I gave up like in the first 20 minutes because I um, got some water in my snorkel and I got panicked. Yeah. Um, because I cannot find a, a rock to hold on and also because I was quite new to this. But a um, um, personal trainer of mine once said that, oh, you are too easy to give up. So this makes me think maybe it is too easy for me to give up and there's something I should learn from um, Jamie because he didn't give up and he got the power so I think the key is don't give up don't give up too soon anyway yeah. <laughs> I mean if they're not there they're not there but have a good crack at it yeah. before you give up have a good crack at it um, now JJ Phillips also made a comment here saying she may have had too much weight on her belt buddy now you had six kilograms of weight on you that evening and I was wondering if you were sinking or not was that six kilograms of weight on your weight belt too much or was it was it, was it actually okay um, I think it was like a little bit too much to me that night yeah. because the water is shallow and because I was like keep swimming and don't um, break, so that is that is no good. I think I should take off the uh, belt that night. So um, this one is from Soul Diver Advan Adventure, like two months ago. Awesome video, bro. Safety first. Yeah, that's the uh, the thing is you've got to stay safe when you're doing this, and there's. A lot of things that can go wrong and you've got to forward plan for that. I'm actually glad that none of those seals decided to mess with us because there were so many seals sitting up there on the rocks and it, it, it would have only taken one angry mother or father seal to come along and, and growl and snarl and say hey get out of our territory you know what are you doing here so I'm glad that that didn't happen especially in the evening like that you know when they're all there. So this one is from Michael River like one month ago. Your video is very honest. You've had a busy summer. I recently made a power and rosemary pie and the classic cream and tomato dish for family after not having dived for some 20 years. It is good to see all these videos. Yeah, well that's, uh, that's great that you're having another crack at it. Um, I mean we're very much new to it. I've got a couple more years experience than Ying, but we're both very much still beginners ourselves. I mean, that's the funny thing about something like this is you, you get into it and some people get into it as teenagers and then they have all of those years of experience and then other people are in their 40s like us and give it a go for the first time. But uh, yeah, thanks for saying that the video is very honest because we, uh, it's important to be authentic. You know, when you make a video, you're kind of presenting yourself as the entertainment for people. So it's important to present something that's honest. Yeah, and we think it's very, very important to have some quality time with your family. Okay, that's my Tahatsu 9.8 horsepower outboard. I thought I'd just show you this. Um, this is how I uh, store it. And it's um, it may or may not be a long-term permanent storage solution. Um, the issue that I had was that it's got to go somewhere in the garage and in the rest of the garage there's there's not a lot of space It's all kind of space taken up with everything except we had this 
small space available right here you know this is only like 350 millimeters wide here this space so it's like I've got some old timber from old pallets and built this um, stand here now when I pull this block away there's actually wheels down there underneath and um, there are as a counterbalance to it to stop the whole thing tipping over this way I, I built these shelves here and that's where my, where my weight belts live so weight belt and weight vest yeah and then when, it, when the time comes to uh, flush the outboard uh, you know after a, um, a, a trip out uh, you know I just take this whole thing I wheel it out onto the driveway I connect the hose and the flushing earmuffs to the water intake and um, that's how I maintain the outboard motor and uh, works pretty well. Let's hope it doesn't fall over one day. Welcome back to the second half of this dive. Look, I'm sitting on a beam underneath the Wainui Wharf. Now, just previously, it didn't get caught on camera, but on the front of my uh, Kaiwaka Iti float boat there, there's actually a little spot where I glued on my uh, GoPro and it was um, a, a flat GoPro mount uh, which uh, holds a GoPro camera and it was held on with uh, Sally's liquid nails now for you international people that's just a standard industrial adhesive uh, typically used for wood so I had it glued on but uh, I guess that liquid nails must not be uh, water resistant because it just it dropped off it fell off and it was like ah my GoPro mount it's fallen off the float and it's underneath the wharf so I'm going to dive down and try to recover it and what do I find when I'm down there hello and there's the GoPro mount Now, I've seen other people's videos where this type of thing happens. There's a channel out there called uh, Scuba Jake. He used to be called D Almighty, and he kind of specializes in uh, diving for lost valuables. He dives under bridges and, and, and piers and, and things exactly like this. And I've watched his videos for years, and it's the same thing as what you're seeing here, finding a lost cell phone. So I was like, ah, finally, I've found somebody's lost valuable. Ah, found the phone. Found the, found the phone under the wharf. <laughs> but I want to have a little bit of a look underneath this pier for anything else that just happens to be down there. I've dived under this pier uh, once before. There's not much there. Uh, it's pretty dark, so basically no seaweed grows down there. But the last time I'd been under there, uh, I did find a whole lot of power shells. But it looks like somebody's gone and recovered all those power shells since the last time I was down there because there's basically just nothing there except a bunch of rocks and a little bit of rubbish. Now the people who go fishing from this pier, they stand up there and they throw their lines overboard and they hope that there's going to be a fish down there and uh, I mean as you can see from the video um, there's it's a very barren landscape down there there's really nothing there probably about the most that you can get is to take some mussels off of the pier and there's plenty of them there I mean I wouldn't say hundreds and thousands but they're, they're there black shell mussels so you can just tear off a bunch and take them you got to get in the water to get them though. The only downside to these mussels is that they're absolutely covered in barnacles. So when you get home you sort of got to scrape all the barnacles off. So <laughs> I usually don't take too many. You get sick of scraping all those barnacles off. And I had hung my uh, spear gun off of the uh, corner of the pier here, just to kind of hold it in place, like a bit like an anchor. So just recovering the spear gun there. And as you will see from uh, everybody else's spear fishing videos, uh, you know you don't load the gun until you get into the water. And make sure that you 
unload the gun uh, prior to getting out. Now one of the things that this, the other spear fishing guys don't tell you in the videos is that, because um, it's sort of one of these things that's not worth mentioning, but it is actually easier to load and unload them in the water as opposed to out of the water. I don't quite know why that is, I guess the water just, um, I don't know, makes the rubber of the, uh, the wishbone rubber a little bit more flexible or something. But it is actually easier to load and unload them uh, in the water. And here's one of the more unglamorous parts of shore diving. It's this rigmarole of getting in and getting out. Yeah, see you saw there, the gun just slid down. That's one of those just little things, one of those little learning things, okay. is that when you've never used this equipment before, you've never given it a go, there's little things like that are going to happen. You know, the gun's going to slide down, something's going to fall over, whatever it is, it's going to happen, because, I mean, this sport, it is quite gear intensive. But yeah, having a look at this iPhone, I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure what type of iPhone it was. I actually dried it out at home, I gave it a bit of a clean up, I had a look, there was not an SD card inside of it, so I wasn't able to recover anything from that phone. Unfortunately, the phone just ended up in the rubbish. So we only planned this dive at the last minute, um, Ying basically said let's go out there, let's go for a swim, let's do something. Uh, it was the end of summer and it was uneventful, there wasn't much there, but it was a learning experience because sometimes you've got to have those boring learning experiences. Well it's about five in the afternoon now, it's an Apple phone. <laughs> wasn't looking for it but it's right there, right down there, some poor person dropped it. Oh well, got some mussels and uh, Ying's got some sea snails. Tini, are they good to eat? Never eaten them. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> this was the first dive for Ying with her fancy new yellow Cressy fins and uh, it was the last dive I think for that blue surfing wetsuit. That wetsuit is now going to be retired and I now have a new, better, cool blue open sail wetsuit. Hey, have a look what just arrived in the uh, in the post. I'm wearing it. Sequel wetsuit. This is a uh, custom made wetsuit. Okay, this is a sequel wetsuit made in uh, blue camo. Uh, sequel is based in Auckland and they make custom made wetsuits. So what I did with this wetsuit was I sent them all my measurements and then six to eight weeks later it came in the mail. So it's made of 3mm uh, number 38 Yamamoto neoprene. Uh, it's got a beaver tail, uh, a loading pad, and it has smooth skin seals around the uh, wrists and ankles and around the face. Uh, on the pants it's got a uh, knife pouch on the right thigh. Uh, it has a built-in scupper because when you're in the water and you're busting to have a piss, <laughs> you want that scupper, trust me, you want that. <laughs> uh, knee pads. And I opted for high-waisted trousers rather than uh, the kind of uh, overall long john style. So I don't know much about the company, but Sequel is a company in Auckland. And um, I've just put this on, like literally just two minutes ago, I just put this on. 
So I got a friend to come over and help measure me, you know, all of the arm measurements and the leg measurements and the body and everything. And um, yeah, I, I'm not sponsored or anything. We've got a load of pad here for spear fishing. And uh, this is three millimeter. After last summer, you know, I was wearing that um, five millimeter wetsuit uh, up in Kaikoura and it was a wee bit hot. And just wearing it, it's just like, oh, just cooking. So I figured, well, three millimeter will be better. And the other thing about that five millimeter one that I got from, um, got it from Wetty, is that it, it's a bit ill fitting. It's not quite a perfect fit. But this one, I sent my measurements off to Sequel, and uh, it's a perfect fit. Yeah, woo. So this will be what I'll be, what I'll be wearing next summer. The days of the surfing wetsuit are now in the past. I have my nice, comfortable, soft Yamamoto neoprene three millimeter blue sequel wetsuit. So now the diving kiwi is gonna look blue in color. Holy shit. I can't believe it. You, you made it to the end of the video. If you've made it to the end of the video, can you please put a comment in there that says, I'm a 100 percenter? Because, you know, it's a 30 minute long video. Anyway, you finally made it to the end. You have finally made it. <laughs> Big ups to you. I mean, geez, you know, these days the audience got an attention span of like three minutes. <sighs> Next summer. I'm really looking forward to using that blue wetsuit. And I still have not done Mot Now yet. Mot to know. Uh, hoping to take the boat out there, find a good day, dive. Definitely want to get a couple more dives done at Littleton Harbour because that's pretty close. Uh, water is murky, but it's close. You know, I'd like to try to find some kinder or something. And uh, yeah, it's interesting, there's been a recent Radio New Zealand article uh, put out recently and I'll just link to it, it's in the, it's in the, the links down there, and right, it's right there. This Radio New Zealand article has said that the Ministry of Fisheries uh, reported, if I recall correctly, that 35 tonnes of power were harvested by the recreational fishers over that three month power season that they had and it was like seven times greater amount than what they were anticipating. So, next summer, uh, remains to be seen, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, I don't know if there's gonna be another power season, <laughs> because everybody went there, and if you go back and you watch the videos of mine, you can see there's so many, 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 many people there, door delay. <sighs> anyway, probably more power diving will be probably Akarala Harbor again. Anyway, I also have a new Solus propeller from my Tahatsu outboard, so hopefully I can get a bit more speed, a bit more performance out of that. And I've ordered a set of Tim Lee Crayfish Ruku Blades. Upgrading to the Ruku Blades this year. And I'm hoping to do a bit more full training this year too. So that wraps up the video. Thanks for watching. I will definitely be seeing you probably around about September or October when we get into the water again.